Hello guys, my name is Kazim Kodri and welcome to my rant for today. We're still discussing about cryptocurrency and in the previous two episodes, we talked about the origin cryptocurrency generally and um, origin of money, how it's all translated down to Bitcoin that we have today. So um, today, basically, I just want to be discussing what I feel are the flaws and benefits of Bitcoin. So I'll start from the flaws because it's always good to start from the bad thing. I don't know who said that. But one of the first flaw I think Bitcoin has is basically it's not fast enough. Someone might be like, ah, I just sent one Bitcoin and I collected another Bitcoin. So um, how it works is, so for every time you send a Bitcoin, in the other episode, I had to say something that people have to validate. A lot of um, computers have to validate, which are called miners, have to validate that, okay, so this um, amount of Bitcoin you're sending to someone is valid. You understand? So the process of doing that takes 10 minutes based on the calculation takes 10 minutes to actually validate each transaction so if there are over a billion transactions happening in a day right like that amount of transactions happening you can't actually um that wait time of 10 minutes for each transaction is too long so you just assume i just want to buy something quickly and just move on i would have to wait for like some amount of time for that actual money valid the other person might get it but it's not valid enough so it's after that amount of time that has been valid validated between all miners before you can actually say okay this amount of bitcoin is actually valid because the whole essence of having a, a, a currency is for me not to be scammed by someone someone that can actually even scam me with my own bitcoin so then another issue is from the previous one i just mentioned is that it's majorly suitable for large transactions believe it or not i can buy something small with bitcoin but it's designed for large transactions so let's just say i want to buy a house a car because in that way i'm sending a lot of money but it takes a, the, a reasonable amount of that to get validated even in as much as you can send millions from one account to another which is not really done like that most of them there has to be a process so even if you are calling me from a company and you're saying a large amount of someone to someone there has to be some um levels of validation or should i say accountancy before it gets to the other person because it's actually a large amount of money and bitcoin is suitable for that we're not saying that it can be used for small transactions but that's what i feel it's best use case for so that's why i think companies like tesla paypal that are actually investing greatly into bitcoin right now they see that potential because it makes more sense to be able to be used for purchasing large amount of things so um another thing is the amount of bitcoin the limit of bitcoins that we can have so currently we have i i think we have we have mined over i think 18 million bitcoin if i can remember but they can, we can only have is it 18 million maybe 18 thousand mm, it's gonna be 10 thousand can it I would I would have to check back and validate that, but we can only have 21 million Bitcoin for now because that was what was um, in the white paper that Naka, um, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote out and in the Git repo. We can only have 21 million Bitcoins. So if we can only have um, 21 million Bitcoin, that's limiting and that's a disadvantage. Let me explain why. Because basically, why we have central banks out for um countries is because we should be able to regulate the amount of flow of currency in circulation and that way it would avoid inflation and deflation so the amount of bitcoin can actually reduce to zero in a moment because if people stop trusting the value of bitcoin so if i trust that the value of bitcoin is not um fifty nine thousand dollars which is the current rate i would want to pay less for it and if all, all the people trying to buy and sell bitcoin believe that at the moment then the value of bitcoin can even turn to be zero in a moment notice you understand so who regulates the flow of bitcoin because when you reduce cash in um should i say in circulation when you reduce 
cash in, trans- in circulation, it automatically increases the value of that cash. Automatically, it doesn't always do that, but that's what it automatically does. So it automatically reduces, so it increases the value of that um, currency in circulation. So when you increase it, it can actually inflate. Sorry, no, it can actually deflate the value, or in, be, in better terms, it can actually reduce the value of that currency. So I feel they should be not really like a body because technically it has to be a body because someone created it, so someone should be able to regulate it. There's a system that regulates all that, but I feel there should be a body that should be able to increase or reduce the amount of Bitcoin in circulation, so it doesn't inflate or deflate just by people changing up their mind although that's another problem because when that exists it defeats the whole purpose of bitcoin so i i, I just a disadvantage i see and i i've not really seen a solution to that problem and i'm not disadvantage not really a disadvantage per se but sorry about that not really a disadvantage per se but it's an issue not really i, I don't even want to call it an issue but the person who created bitcoin um Nakamoto Satoshi Nakamoto owns one million bitcoins. Do that math. So Bitcoin is at fifty nine thousand dollars, right? Right now, times one. That uh, uh, I'm poor with mathematics. So let's just say roughly fifty nine five hundred and ninety million or five yeah five hundred and ninety million. Like in, yeah five hundred and ninety million. Please, please if I'm wrong, do me a favor to um give send the right calculation to me but that's basically the how rich that person is not saying it's a bad thing but that's a lot because even the um uh, if you that the person owns a lot and it's actually good but i just feel it's something i should mention and i should leave it in the disadvantage part so not leaving everybody too exc- excited about that information so that's just what I see as the disadvantage. Not really disadvantage, but less of a benefit for Bitcoin. Now, the benefits I see for Bitcoin are number one, privacy, which is very essential in this time and age because people should have a private life. They should do things that the government does have to have a buck-nosing way of checking through its transactions, you understand? And in countries where we have um, dictators, so people should be able to buy and sell things without being worried about who checks these things because if you actually get to some countries that they have the data you understand the need for privacy and also the decentralized system which is also technically the blockchain system that's one big benefit because no one can actually just turn off so you can actually hack bitcoin yeah, i would get back to that but you can't just turn it off because a lot of people are actually making the system work so You'd have to hijack all these computers that are actually um, mining Bitcoin currently to be able to hack Bitcoin. So it's still a decentralized network, but that can be hacked. So technically, anything can be hacked, but that's basically how it works. So less government influence. I, I didn't say no government influence because the government can still influence the price of Bitcoin. It's how they can influence um, the value of Naira or dollar in the market. They have ways whereby. They can do that those are like tools in the hands of the government and it's almost unhackable i already mentioned that that's like my fourth benefit for bitcoin so how does all this information i've listed out affect a layman i'll be explaining that in the next episode so i i think you should be excited about that but just looking forward to the next episode i'll discuss how it affects a layman um who benefits from my projection which i'll be discussing at the end what's the way forward alternatives to bitcoin so um from the alternative bitcoin i'll be discussing ethereum which is another interesting cryptocurrency i'm excited about and why am i actually excited about that cryptocurrency so thank you very much and don't forget to listen to this via anchor don't forget to drop a clap and share this to your friends uh we really need to get the word out there it's for people and i really want to get your opinion on all this so you can send me a mail according to Kazimon reach me on any social media platform at Kazim Kodri 01. Thank you very much. So welcome back. Um, if you are listening to this episode, please listen to the previous ones. 
we discussed about cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin, and why I feel that the benefits and disadvantages of Bitcoin. So um, I said in the previous episode we are going to be talking about who benefits. A bit, sorry, how this affects a layman. So um, all these, how do they affect a layman? And if you remember in my some the list of disadvantage I gave, I said this um, the cryptocurrency Bitcoin is best suited for large transactions. Yeah, we can use it for smaller transactions, but it's best suited for large transactions. So at some point, I feel Bitcoin will tr- um, evolve from being a currency to an asset, just as our gold evolved from being a currency to being an asset, because. Bitcoin per se, not generally all cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, for a reason why. Because the value of Bitcoin is good. I like that the value of Bitcoin is that is as high as it is. But I feel it, in some sense, um, in a way whereby people would not be able to have enough amount of Bitcoin. That's why I listed out the limit of how many Bitcoin we have in circulation as its advantage. But if we just have 21 million Bitcoin, which is the same um, case of gold there's a limited supply of gold you can have infinite amount of gold that's why it evolved from being just a currency to being an asset one of the reasons why it evolved and that's not the specific reason but that's the same thing that would happen to bitcoin so it becomes an asset that everyone can have a piece of it you can actually have a piece of gold also so if you buy some shares or something you can have a certain amount of gold same thing would happen to bitcoin but it will be a more decentralized way whereby you don't have to um, have big machines to actually mine Bitcoin or you don't have to have a lot of manpower or government regulations to have some amount of Bitcoin in your stand. Because there are regulations to have gold and I feel you have to, there, are, there are institutions that still have to validate the authenticity of your gold. But there's already a system in place to do that for Bitcoin, which you don't have to do stress over so that's one of the reasons ways i see it affects in a layman so what's the way forward so the way forward are alternatives to bitcoin you might be like alternatives to bitcoin what do you mean because i feel bitcoin solves the problem of privacy decentralization um transactions online but it limits itself without a body to regulate the flow and use case bitcoin uh, breaded blockchain technology but uses only just one part of it which is for transactions and money but another currency which i'm very excited about which is ethereum expands that so ethereum is also a cryptocurrency which is on also on the blockchain technology that means it's decentralized but has a body or a regulation that a body that regulates its availability. So currently, I think the limit of Ethereum is I think 120 million Ethereum that can that can actually be mined. And I think over 100 million of it has been mined already. But what happens is this can be increased or reduced. So the body knows how to do this. And the owner, the creator of Ethereum, we, who we all know, is one of these people on this body that can do that. But Ethereum has so many um, use cases. And the interesting thing is it has all the benefits of Bitcoin and adds to itself. So that's why I feel it's the way forward and an alternative, not really an alternative to Bitcoin, but it it takes everything good about Bitcoin and fixes some of the bad parts of Bitcoin. Some, not all, because they are still going to be, we'll see in the future, discover some other issues with these cryptocurrencies as to anything man creates that always good and bad part of it so one of the interesting part i like about ethereum is something called nfts so nfts are non-fundable sorry non-fungible tokens which are technically a way to validate digital assets so i can paint a picture and sell it to someone without that person actually even feeling the fiscal um, version of pictures of that picture i painted or portrait or whatever it is and someone buys it and can validate that and be true on a true NFT. So basically, that's what NFTs are. They're like ID cards for assets, digital assets. And that's what people sell these days. 
So um, we have artists who we don't even know, and they just sell art online through NFTs, non fungible tokens. And this has really changed how, um, should I say, auctions and how artists really do their work. Because most artists before have to paint, then you have an auction or a gallery that puts it up and someone tries to purchase it and you start. But now you don't have to have a physical painting anymore. So with my um, Photoshop, I can actually paint something out and sell it to another person. You just have to ensure that it has an NFT, which is a non fungible token that the person uses to validate that, okay, I'm true owner of this and I'm selling that to another person. And these are one of the applications, and it's programmable. That's another thing I like about um, Ethereum. So you can actually build stuff based on the Ethereum technology, which is still based on the blockchain technology. So it's just like um, Ethereum is a library on a framework which is blockchain. So the blockchain is a framework. Ethereum is just one of the use cases of the blockchain technology. So you can even use the Ethereum um, platforms for for um sorry what's the word yeah for elections so the whole election part because recently america voted and they had to do their um the whole election process through mail so people had to go there fiscally due to the coronavirus the pandemic but nfts can sorry ethereum can actually help in that use case so why i feel ethereum is better than bitcoin is because it has other use cases that it's more not limited to just a cryptocurrency it expands that world you understand that's why i feel ethereum is a better alternative and it can increase and reduce so you, it's not like we are limiting the amount that it eventually turns out to be an asset it can still be a currency or someone creates something better i feel there has to be a future for two all this that there will probably be a better um, cryptocurrency or a more closely, should I say, perfect cryptocurrency we have in the future. But these are just basically my thoughts, and I would really love to hear yours about what you think about the past four, uh, yeah, I think four episodes based on cryptocurrency, which is my sub series called My White Paper. And don't forget, I will have the written format of this episode so you can actually check my sources out and get a better understanding of what I'm just trying to explain. Thank you very much and have a nice day.